Welcome to the know, I'm Meg Turney. I'm John Reisinger. Do you love to use your technology irresponsibly? Well, you've got a great get out of jail free card. Just blame the company who made it. I always do. The next one is you, That's John. me, I read that? It yes. doesn't say the name, so I don't know. It's That's funny. the case for Snapchat, who's now been named in a lawsuit for a car accident involving a teen who used the app while driving. It's not out of the ordinary for people to do stupid things with tech while they're doing other stupid things, but it's not too often that it leads to the tech company itself being sued. So hey, if you want to get your naughty bits stuck in your Xbox One disk drive on Microsoft Dime, go ahead, do it. Yeah, thank God that was getting really expensive to just put my flaps in by myself. This particular lawsuit comes out of Georgia where a car crash nearly left five people dead last September and apparently that's Snapchat's fault. Yeah, so specifically the app's speed filter is what's being blamed for the accident. The team driver responsible was reportedly trying to capture herself traveling at 100 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone so she could post it to Snapchat. All just great ideas right there. Good God, she rear-ended the plaintiff, Wentworth Maynard, at a speed of about 120 seven miles per hour. In addition to severe injuries to the Snapchatter and the three passengers in her car, Maynard himself went into a coma, spending five weeks in intensive care. He has also suffered permanent brain damage. Wow. Uh, but who's got more money than an 18 year old who doesn't know when to put her phone down? Silicon Valley. Maynard's family is now suing Snapchat for its involvement in, for an unspecified amount. Now, according to Maynard's attorneys, the companies facilitated the driver's excessive speeding because of the irresponsible implementation of the speed filter, which rewards users for how fast they happen to be moving. I like to think my speedometer does the same thing for me. Uh, maybe. Uh, they went on to state that the app made her distracted and encouraged her to drive recklessly, saying, this is a product liability case because Snapchat put something very dangerous in the marketplace without any warnings or safeguards and basically said, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, Snapchat's valuation Bullshit! Of, oh, sorry. <laughs> 10 to 20 billion dollars probably has a little something to do with uh, all this being added to the soup, but hey, you know, no big deal. However, they did say they're going to hold the driver accountable, which is why she's named in the lawsuit as well. But they do believe Snapchat played a major role. For the driver's part, her family claims that Maynard pulled out in front of her illegally. Now, however, the passengers in her car have said on record that she was driving as fast as 113 miles per hour. Plus, a car crash expert was able to determine how quickly her car was moving at the time of striking Maynard's vehicle. This is, of course, a messy case and joins a long list of instances of people too distracted by their phones to, you know, not make like stupid decisions. Really bad decisions. Being a teenager also plays a lot. It's tough. Into that, yeah. Although to be fair, rewarding people for using the speed filter at various speeds, really not a good look for Snapchat either. It'll actually make their case a little more difficult in court. Distracted driving has become something of a national topic with regulations being passed all over the country to curb the use of cell phones while driving. Currently 14 states ban handheld cell phones while driving and 37 states ban cell phone use completely for novice or teen drivers. A 2014 study actually found that cell phone use was related to as many as one out of every four accidents, which is just bananas. Bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. And while many would like to point the finger at Maynard for suing Snapchat, you can see how victims of these kinds of tragedies want someone to blame besides a the driver. There are now so many cases of people hurting others while cell phone driving, everyone just wants to find a solution. In the same way that the public is trying to figure out who to blame for issues like gun violence, victims and lawmakers are hoping to minimize these types of incidents by holding some party out there responsible, somebody who can make quick, meaningful changes. Um, for some people, that means just holding each individual culpable, and for others, it means taking the whole industry to task. But going after tech companies themselves? I don't really know that that's really the answer. At the moment, nobody's certain how far this case will actually proceed. Maynard's attorneys are saying it's a cut and dry product liability case, but eh, we all know it's not going to be that simple. While product liability laws are handled on state-by-state -state basis, product liability is generally meant to cover the use of dangerous or defective products, in which case Snapchat's not either of those. Yeah, an app that can't really hurt you by itself or through misuse or by being defective. Sounds like a great movie premise. Yes. <laughs> it's not the same as like a hoverboard catching fire or a PlayStation that shoots discs at you, flaps that you put in there. <laughs> Let's see what we can talk about flaps. Yes. However, it could be argued that Snapchat was negligent in its design, especially with the speed filter measuring your MPH. Yeah, in addition, a product must have been sold in other order to be covered by product liability. Snapchat is a free app 
available to anyone to use or misuse, so that might not hold up in their lawsuit. In the past, that's usually the way these things go. Back in 2009, a woman sued both Samsung and Sprint after her mother was killed by a distracted cell phone driver. That case was ultimately thrown out, along with another similar one from 2003 when a victim sued Singular. Now, that was a cell phone carrier the other driver was using in that incident. The reason they were both thrown out was because the cell phone providers had no legal relationship with either victim. More recently, a woman sued Google for giving her bad walking directions along a busy highway at night. The road had no sidewalks and very little visibility, which resulted in her being run over. She's had over $100,000 in medical expenses since then. However, a court threw that case out as well, mostly because Google didn't have a direct legal relationship with the victim. The court also said it would open a dangerous legal precedent, which would lead to many more suing Google and possibly damaging the valuable service it provides to the public for free. So, in general, that's the way these services or app lawsuits tend to go, especially if there's not a legal connection between the two. It's likely that Snapchat's case will get a similar ruling. Still, it does highlight an issue that we probably won't see the end of for a long while, and that problem is cell phone driving and people being dumb with cell phones. Yes. But again, that's why we have increasing regulations. Many want to make cell phone use as punishable as drunk driving. Stepping up the legal action might be one way to help curb risky cell phone use. Is there anything certain in this world that said humans will figure out new ways to hurt themselves? Yay us. We're dumb. <laughs> it's why every product ever tries to warn you against self-strangulation, mutilation, decapitation, putting your flaps in, and other bad itations, really. Because we like to hurt ourselves and then blame other people. So what do you guys think about this legal case against Snap? Snapchat, would you put a flap in a PlayStation? Let Every us day. know in the comments down below. For future stories about technology and all of its ridiculous applications, including flaps, like this video and subscribe to The No. This particular lawsuit comes out of Georgia. <laughs> Yes! This particular lawsuit is not funny, and it comes out of Georgia, where a car crash left five people dead last September. Nearly dead. A oh, good. Okay, let's back it up again. <laughs> it's getting Make better. Make just kill five people. <laughs> it's not the same as like a hoverbird that hoverbird. And while many would like to point the finger at Maynard for snooing snap for snooing, <laughs> we're just gonna go with that snooing Snapchat or suing.